All right, so cryptocurrency has not looked too great in 2021. Bitcoin is down 50% from all time highs. Ethereum is down more than 50% from all time highs. Dogecoin, Cardano, XRP, Binance coin. Basically any crypto you pick is down at least 50% from all time highs. And everyone's like, yo, Michael, what is going on with crypto? We've been seeing news all over the place from the SEC delaying decisions for Bitcoin, Ethereum ETFs, which could be huge for crypto, causing it to explode, to Dogecoin co-creator coming out and saying that all of crypto, every single crypto you have seen is a complete scam. And we've seen other great news as well come out from whale accounts. So it's hard to sift through all this information and figure out what exactly is going on. So today we're gonna cover everything you need to know from what's going on with the Dogecoin co-creator calling crypto a scam to what's going on with the market, where it's going, and even a couple of smaller altcoins. So we have a big picture of what's going on, where the market's going, and a couple of important opinions from people like the Dogecoin co-creator, commissioner of the SEC, and a couple of more people. So if you enjoy this sort of content, well then please be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new, turn on the bell notifications, and if you don't already have the public.com investing app, make sure to go ahead and follow me on that. You can buy stocks, sell stocks, and see exactly what I'm buying and selling in real time, as well as a full portfolio breakdown. Think of it like an investing app combined with social media. It is completely free to follow me. Use the code Michael when you sign up and you'll get up to $50 in a free stock. But anyways, right now, the entire crypto market is sitting around 1.3 to $1.4 trillion market cap. Bitcoin is around that 30 to $35,000 per coin range. And we have seen a consistent downtrend over the last couple of weeks and last couple of months, ever since Bitcoin was at an all time high of around $65,000 per coin. Bitcoin dominance has started to increase, which is a sign that we have been entering a bear market and entering a crypto winter. Right now, Bitcoin dominance is sitting right around 45.6%. And typically what happens in the crypto world is when Bitcoin and all crypto prices start to drop, well, people get nervous, people People get out of the smaller altcoins and they pour more money into Bitcoin, causing Bitcoin dominance to go up. However, right now, in addition to this, we're seeing Bitcoin fall below the 100 day moving average and starting to pull away from that. That is not a good sign. In addition to this, we are seeing that over the last couple of weeks that we have not been able to reach a new high. For example, every single time we drop and rebound, it's at a lower high than it was previously. So on June 29th, we, we reached about a $36,200 price for Bitcoin. Then when we bounced back up on July 4th, we only reached 35,000. Then when we bounced back up again on July 7th, we only reached 34,000. Then on July 13th, we only reached 33,900. So when you see this trend over the last couple of months, we try to break out, we reach a high, but then every single time we try and bounce back, try and break through that previous high, we're not able to. So it's like consistent downtrend over the last couple of weeks, last couple of months. And in addition to this, we're below the 100 day moving average, which is a sign that many technical analysts would say is a sign that we are in a bear market and crypto is gonna continue to fall over the next couple of months. One key support that we have had for a while is right around that $30,000 per coin range, which is the one piece of positive news with regards to technicals to keep in mind in just the broad scope of things. There are a couple of other technical indicators that could be signaling we're in a buy zone, but for the most part, general, we are seeing strong support at around $30,000 per coin, but we are in a downtrend right now. With regards to big news, key dates coming up is a lot of analysts have been talking about GBTC unlocking Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and the unlocking that takes place every single month. Every single month, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust consistently unlocks new shares. And essentially the way it works is when institutions buy into Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, they are not allowed to sell for six months. So if you bought on January 1st, you can't sell until six months later. So around like July 1st or June 1st. And we're continuing to see this happen. So right now, uh, middle of July, we are seeing one of the biggest unlockings ever in the history of GBTC. And we are seeing over 40,000 Bitcoin being unlocked, which essentially means all of these institutions now have the ability to go ahead and sell what they had previously purchased six months ago. And we're seeing the biggest of these unlockings take place on July 18th, 
2021, which is going to be over 16,000 Bitcoin. So many analysts, many people are saying this event has caused a lot of short term fear in the market and it's going to drive the price of Bitcoin down even further because Grayscale Bitcoin Trust owns hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin. And while their supply remains pretty stable, we do see them, you know, been selling off their positions a little bit over time. The one thing that I would say is a sign that we have a strong support at 30,000, that we're not going to continue to crash and that we could actually bounce back is what's going on with GBTC. So right now, like we said, there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be over 40,000 Bitcoin unlocked in July, meaning that over 40,000 Bitcoin can be sold. But the thing to keep in mind with this is that when GBT shares um, unlock, and if they do get sold, the GBTC premium drops. And as a result of this, there's a bigger incentive for people to buy B GBT shares rather than Bitcoin. So it essentially cancels each other out. Essentially what I'm saying is something called the GBTC premium is the share price of GBTC relative to the Bitcoin in the trust. So let's say they own however many Bitcoin, it has a certain amount of value. If they own a thousand Bitcoin, it has a certain amount of value. You know, you just take the price of Bitcoin, you times it by how many Bitcoin they hold. That's the value. But every share doesn't represent one Bitcoin. So you essentially, the GBTC premium is the share price of GBTC relative to the Bitcoin in the trust. And the important thing is here is over the last year, we have seen the GBTC premium go negative. So previously, um, it was better just to own regular Bitcoin than it was to own GBTC. But now the GBTC premium is negative, meaning that the value of GBTC, the share price is like lower than it should be. Like if it was zero, that means, okay, the share price represents the exact price of all the Bitcoin, like the net value of all the Bitcoin in the trust but it doesn't right now. So that means that if you take all the shares, you times it by the share price, that number is lower than all the Bitcoin that they own times it by the price of Bitcoin. So this is something positive because everyone's saying when GBTC unlocking takes place, institutions are gonna sell off. First of all, I don't think this is gonna happen because right now and throughout the rest of 2021, whenever there is a big unlocking event for GBTC, what we're gonna see is that 90 like from now on from this point forward every single time there's an unlocking event any institution who bought bitcoin is going to be in the red meaning that if they sell they're going to have lost money so i don't think anyone who bought into gbtc after mid january of 2021 is going to be selling and so that means throughout the rest of the next six months i don't think gbtc unlockings are going to have big impacts on the price of bitcoin they only in my opinion could actually help because if people sell off it's going to create a lot of buying pressure because this premium this premium for gbtc um, is going to continue to look much more attractive to institutional investors remember when this premium is more like when it's negative and when it's a higher percentage, like negative 16.7% versus negative 11.75%. Anytime it's negative, it's more attractive to buy GBTC than Bitcoin. Moving on, the Dogecoin co-creator came out recently and said that all of crypto is basically a scam. It is created to make the rich people richer. And the whole goal and the whole idea of it being decentralized is just a complete joke. So let's go over exactly what he said. Um, one of the Dogecoin co-creators named Jackson Palmer He's usually pretty quiet. He doesn't talk a lot on crypto. He actually made his Twitter account private back in 2019, and we hadn't heard a single word from him since 2019. But now he came out for the first time in over two years and tweeted what he thought about crypto and how he thinks it's just a complete joke, a complete scam. And this is interesting coming from the Dogecoin co-creator because the Dogecoin community is stronger than just about any community in all of crypto, and everyone seems to follow pretty heavily what they have to say. But anyways, he said right now, I'm often asked, we're just gonna go over exactly what he said. He said, right now I'm often asked if I will return to cryptocurrency or begin regularly sharing my thoughts on the topic again. My answer is a wholehearted no, but to re avoid repeating myself, I figure it might be worthwhile briefly explaining why here. Seems like he doesn't want anything to do with crypto in my opinion and from what he has said previously, but he's gonna share all of his thoughts here. He prevented anyone from really replying to it as well. 
He said, after years of studying crypto, I believe that it is an inherently right-wing, hyper-capitalistic technology primarily built to amplify the wealth of its proponents through a combination of tax avoidance, diminished regulatory oversight, and artificially enforced scarcity. He said, despite claims of decentralization, the cryptocurrency industry is controlled by a powerful cartel of wealthy figures who with time have evolved to incorporate many of the same institutions tied to the existing centralized financial system they supposedly set out to replace. In addition to this, he said the cryptocurrency industry leverages a network of shady business connections, um, bought influencers and pay for play media outlets to perpetuate a cult-like get-rich-quick funnel designed to extract new money from the financially desperate and naive. So basically what he's saying is, look, they had an idea of it being decentralized. It was created to be decentralized, but ultimately they're still scamming people the same way that they used to with like, there's all these scams going on with people who have the most influence, the most amount of Bitcoin. They're either manipulating the market with whale accounts, buying and selling, or they are, you know, encouraging people to buy coins that have absolutely no underlying value. In addition to this, he said financial exploitation undoubtedly exists before cryptocurrency, but cryptocurrency is almost purpose built to make the funnel of profiteering more efficient for those at the top and less safeguarded for the vulnerable. Essentially what he says is that it's like if you lose your savings, your, if you lose your savings account password with crypto, it's your fault. You fall victim to a scam, your fault. Billionaires manipulating the market, they're geniuses. And he says this type of dangerous free for all capitalism cryptocurrency was unfortunately architectured to facilitate since its inception. And he said ultimately right now that using all the technology behind crypto, it essentially, um, it's like taking the worst parts of today's capitalist system, like fraud, corruption, inequality, using software to just limit people um, and limit the use of interventions like audits, regulation, taxation. And these are a lot of the same concerns that we have seen from regulators all across the world. They say, look, cryptocurrency promotes illegal activities and it prevents people from paying taxes, prevents people from um, regulation. And ultimately it lets the people who have the most influence in that world have ultimate control. This is what he said. Obviously he goes on and on to say that he doesn't talk about cryptocurrency because he doesn't believe in it. He thinks it's a scam. And it's interesting to see this come from someone who made one of the top 10 cryptos in the entire world. Right now, when we look at crypto, um, Dogecoin, the one that he helped create, is number eight in terms of total market cap out of all cryptos. It's well in that number eight position. And this is interesting because Dogecoin was supposedly created as a complete joke. And now one of the co-creators of it says, that crypto is created as a scam. He doesn't like it. So is he just a bit sour? Maybe he doesn't own any crypto. That's possible. Or is he just looking at this from an outside perspective saying, look, I've been in the crypto world and I don't like what I've seen in the crypto space. I think both of these are reasonable things to think, but let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think it's that he owned crypto before? He doesn't like how it turned out maybe because he didn't hold on to Dogecoin or he lost a lot of money? Or do you think he's just been in the space, he sees what's going on and that's what he thinks? I think personally, there's a side to both of it. I think he has been involved in crypto, so he has seen the worst of it, he has seen the best of it. I think that's true. And I also think it's true that he's looked at crypto and said, he's probably lost a lot of money from Dogecoin, but I think he's also looked at crypto and said, these are all these issues I see going on. People are making billions of dollars, not paying taxes, and there's no regulation, it's a free for all. So I think he's looked at it from both sides. I think it's an interesting perspective do I think all the crypto is a complete scam? No, I definitely don't think it's completely a scam. There are cryptos that do scam people and do prey on people who don't do their research, are naive about investing and just trying to get rich quick. That is definitely true. But I think that will change over time as the market continues to mature. And some of the issues he said, I think will always be there. Others, I think, will start to phase out over time as people become more educated investors. But that was something interesting that went on with Dogecoin co-creator. He called all of crypto a scam. And then finally, I wanna go over something quickly with what's going on with Cardano. So Rwanda-based NGO, which is a non-governmental organization, they partnered with Cardano Foundation to launch an ADA crypto charity platform. Cardano has had a lot of major announcements come out recently between it surpassing 650,000 wallet addresses to it 
um, potentially um, going to El Salvador. The co-founder of Cardano has been in talks with the president of El Salvador. He sent him a letter asking to go and meet with him, potentially about integrating Cardano into their society. In addition to this, Grayscale Investments has added Cardano recently, and Cardano is the most held crypto on all of eToro, which is a major crypto platform across Europe. So Cardano has had a lot of major news lately, which has been very positive. And with this new partnership, essentially what it is, is Cardano installed a gateway that allows ADA donations to come directly to the project without intermediaries. And there's already been over $30,000 worth of ADA donated to, um, it's called Children in Rwanda, been donated to that foundation, uh, that organization, and it's gonna go and help them even more. So there's already been cryptocurrency with used for donations in the past. They've been rising a lot in 2017. GiveWell start, started to accept crypto donations in, earlier in 2021. India's crypto COVID relief fund accepted crypto specifically from the co-creator of Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, donated a billion dollars to this fund. And also UNICEF has been accepting crypto for a while as well. So right now we've been seeing a lot going on with Cardano. And right now, they have a lot going for them. I like this partnership that they've had recently. I like what they're doing with continuing to grow, expand the number of wallet addresses. The potential partnership with um, El Salvador could be huge moving forward, could be a game changer because that could be millions more people directly using Cardano. And other than that, the Cardano is getting to be that third crypto that's getting some mainstream adoption. Grayscale Investments has added Cardano. We're seeing some institutions start to pour money into Cardano and Cardano has been making a lot of progress. They are continuing to roll out their Alonzo upgrade. Um, right now they are, they did fail Alonzo Blue, which rolled out in June, which took place in June. Now we were on Alonzo White. It was just announced that Alonzo White officially, um, Alonzo White part of the upgrade has been uh, successfully deployed and eventually we'll get to Alonzo Purple. And then in September, it'll be the full rollout of Cardano. So that's what's really been going on with crypto. I think we have a lot of positive news coming out recently, even though some technical indicators are pointing to short term downtrends. I think between I, me personally, I think the biggest thing that's going to change in crypto and going to really help us see the price bounce back is when the SEC decides to finally pass a Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF. They've been delaying decision for Bitcoin ETFs for a while. They just delayed Wisdom Tree Bitcoin ETF, Valkyrie Bitcoin ETF, Vanek Bitcoin ETF. They delayed all these decisions. And right now there's over a dozen Bitcoin ETFs that are waiting to be approved. The SEC commissioner came out and said, one of the SEC commissioners came out and said that a Bitcoin ETF is long overdue. She thinks it's about time we get one passed. And I think as soon as we see one of these passed, it's gonna get more institutions involved into crypto, and that's gonna be when the big money starts getting involved. In addition to this, another thing I like to talk about is with regards to, right now, total institutions, very few of them actually invest in Bitcoin. I think the SEC approving a Bitcoin ETF will change that. In addition to this, with US population, only 6% of people in the US own crypto. This trend is growing very quickly. And again, like same with institutions, once we start to see either Apple come out with a crypto wallet or Android start implementing something on all Android devices for crypto. I think that's will be that'll be when we see crypto take off. Like imagine as soon as Apple comes out saying you could buy and sell crypto on their digital wallet, it's going to skyrocket the price of crypto because it's going to make buying, selling, trading crypto instant, easy, and anyone who owns an iPhone can do it. So right now I think that's going to be what changes. Um, just like the SEC them approving a Bitcoin ETF is going to change everything for institutions and big money players getting into crypto. I think when we see Apple come out with a crypto wallet feature, I think that's going to be like the key moment for retail investors, because right now only 6% of the US population own crypto, about a quarter of US investors. But think about it. Barely any institutions own crypto, barely any people in the US own crypto, only 6%. And when you start looking at the big picture, imagine when those percentages go up. Imagine when 50% of people in the US own crypto. Imagine when 50% of institutions own crypto. So I think 
key things to look out for moving forward are going to be the SEC approving Bitcoin, Ethereum ETFs, and some sort of major event in crypto that takes place either whether it's with Apple or another company that makes it so easy for anyone to buy, sell, or use crypto. So we'll just keep an eye out on that right now, short-term trends pointing downwards, but I think all it takes is one of these positive catalysts to come out, turn the market around because there isn't a lack of interest in crypto. Institutions still want to buy it. Um, whale accounts have been accumulating over the last couple of months. So nothing has changed in that sense. It's just we've been in a lull and in a period where there's only really been negative news, negative news coming out from China, negative news with regards to regulations. And all we need is a couple of things positive come out and that's going to start to rebound the market right now. Me personally, I've been continuing to buy on these dips. I've been uh, dollar cost averaging. For example, I bought a couple thousand dollars worth of Ethereum the other day. I bought a couple thousand dollars worth of Cardano. Um, and I've just been doing that like every couple of days. So me personally, I'm not worried about it long term. Um, that's what I'm doing. But let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.